Okay, so it's time to keep pressing forward with the super fun, happy build of Kitty Hawk's SU-17 fitter. Now, last night, um, I got through the cockpit, the engine, and the middle fuselage section. You got the little dangling engine here. Um, I definitely went to a pretty dark place working on, on these pieces. Uh, this kit it has the the maddening engineering that Kitty Hawk so often goes for that um, I don't know exactly why, but it really gets under my skin in ways that just straight up old shitty poor fitting kits don't. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that you know when you look at these things like the detail on the parts, pretty damn solid. I mean it's not the greatest, but it's far from bad. And, you know, it's definitely in the realm of other contemporary kits. But then the engineering just, it's, it's sloppy. It's, you know, the, the, where the sprue gates go, the overlaps, the, you know, the weird use of these little tongue slot things in here as opposed to typical locating pins and holes that just throw things off. And I think it's, it's the fact that it's obvious from the way the kit is molded that they have the competency to do better and they just don't and so that's where my frustration comes from you know it's 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 not a uh, it's not really a hatred of kitty hawk or anything like that um, and it's certainly not the fact that it can't be built it's the fact that it's not better than it is um, pretty much simply that but moving into night two of putting this thing together i'm going to try to take a deep breath and uh, have a, a bit more of a uh, positive attitude. So we'll see how long that lasts. Let's get back to it. Okay, so we're gonna pick up right where we left off. We've got the middle fuselage section right here, which was this fun little area. Now we have to add D41 and whatever the hell these things are for. Um, I have no idea why those are even there. And, you know, hey, let's add internal detail. So let's jump ahead and I see no reason for them to be there at all I mean they I guess they connect to the engine and maybe hold it in place oh maybe all right let's, let's find these parts and go to town Sometimes when I'm working with little parts like this that are easy to get mixed up, um, I'll actually kind of hack out the sprue numbers as well. Move this bastard. So sometimes when I'm working with small parts like this that can get easy to get mixed up, um, I'll cut out the sprue numbers as well so I can keep track of them pretty much up until I need to remove them and use them. First, you got to clean this bastard up. Once again, um, sprue gates in little places. Why? All right. These ones on the inside here are giant. I mean, that's, you know, that's, uh, late 70s Ravelogram right there for you. Right, and this thing supposedly just kind of connects in here somehow, does something. I think it goes like that. But the whole point of this thing is to understand how these kits build and whether or not they're even worth your time. You know, from my opinion and my own preferences of, ha of kits and what I like about kits. So, apologies if uh, I'm not going through as rigorous a process as I normally would. All right, the 
these suckers are ready to go. See, 87 is the one on the outer side, so we're going to do that first. Why not? It's a little bit too big, so we're going to have to... Preload it. So I don't know if this is supposed to hold the engine or not. Doesn't really say. I'll just guess maybe. Okay, so we've got those in. So these fit in pretty nicely, the speed brake housings. And yeah, I can see why they want you to put that part in ahead of time. So let's find D28. So this doesn't quite fit because we've got this other seam, or this... You got this piece here, right? Try to put this piece in here. It won't fit, because if you look at it carefully, it's got a step on it, so we're gonna have to deal with that silliness. Okay, then it fits. So then we're gonna go ahead and Dollop of extra thin. Is this guy in here like this? And voila. Okay, we're back. And as you can see here, the speed brake housings have been glued in, and these actually went together quite nicely. Um, a good positive start. So, now comes the moment of truth, where we get to take those pieces and join them randomly to the midsection. And this is where we run into problems. The circles do not quite line up and it almost looks to me like the rear fuselage is a little bit bigger than the mid fuselage. and a little bit narrower, so, yeesh. Also, we've got some fun squeeze action going on back here where the engine doesn't quite want to fit. And the great part about this is it's because of these guys that are actually detail parts. It's not anything else going on up here, it's those pieces. So, I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming there to clean that up. So how to approach this when we've got this awesome join going on here? Well, <sighs> right. I saw a little nodule sticking up over here, so we're going to Grind that down a little bit. Now what I think I'm gonna do, because this thing seems to be taller and it really needs to be kind of squished down like this in order to really work. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the back. I'm gonna glue here so it doesn't just flop around on me. And then I'll shape this front part into submission. This is one of those, I mean, they could have very easily put 
you know, even just like a ring to stick in here, you know, maybe, I don't know if this thing is meant to be here if you want to display it open with the back end pulled off or what. Not doing a lot of good the way it is. But if they had like, you know, a ring here and a ring here that would shape fit these things together and give you a joint as opposed to this just, you know, dumbass butt join kind of situation here. Like, why does it have to be like this? It doesn't. There's no good reason for it. So, we'll do what we can here. All right. Turn it this way so that we're not getting too much capillary action drawing stuff where we don't want it. Everything is nice and lined up on the bottom here with these stupid tongue joints. And get a little bit more glue. Alright, I'm going to let this sit for a minute to just kind of do its thing, and in the meantime, why don't we go ahead and knock out the tail? This is one that really likes to spread it around on the sprue trees. We've got parts from B, C, and D going on on the tails here. D104 and 105. There we go. Okay, so that's the main tail piece. <clears throat> now, the instructions seem to imply that we have to trap the rudder in here before we glue it, but I don't, it doesn't look that way. So, it looks like we glue this. Ah, seriously? Yeah, see, the rudder fits right in there. You just have to kind of force it a little bit. So these parts D105 and 104 go together to form this little spike thing on the end of the tail. They're little parts and they have absolutely no, um, no kind of thing to hold them together. Alright, we're going to pray for no fingerprints. And that prayer was not answered. That's what happens when you rush, I guess. This is another one for a uh, frustrating fit. This little bullet shape here, there's really no way to get a good amount of sanding in there. So it's just gonna have to be uh, slightly off. This bullet piece right here, I mean, you know, getting a sanding stick in here to clean this up with putty on it and stuff, you're going to be destroying detail left, right, and sideways, and it just doesn't fit quite right. All right, now we've got these D78 pieces, which drop onto the 
tail up here. Supposedly, with these, they're so small that I'm thinking I'm just going to leave the sprue attachment in place, glue it with that, and then cut it. Alright, so as I mentioned before, I'm going to put this guy on top of here. Alright, so I think we can all agree that the top joint up here is probably the most critical part. This is just nasty. So here's another added bonus fun feature. If you line up the halves right here, see these panel lines and everything kind of syncing up, you get over here and what's clearly a, you know, it looks like a release hatch, kind of a release latch, it goes out of whack. And if you line it up, so everything's happy, then up here you get this kind of thing where it goes off. So I kind of feel like we need to focus on up here, get this part locked down cold. So what I'm going to do is move extra thin out of the way and bring in MEK. Now, if you're not familiar with MEK, MEK uh, methyl ethyl ketone is kind of a super solvent for styrene. It is basically similar to to me extra thin and 10x and all those liquid solvent cements in that it melts the plastic and welds it back together, but it is much, much, much hotter. So we're gonna put a little bit right here. Don't swipe a cement right there. Uh, the fun thing is when you get to the bottom, so we're holding this part up here level. Shut up, compressor. Down here, that is quite the step. Holy shit. So I've been hoping to tack top and bottom and let the rest just do its thing, but that might not even be a viable option. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Kitty Hawk, for the uh, six-piece fuselage. It's awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and squeeze this. You squeeze it, it actually conforms nicely. And I'm going to start capillary around the side here. over here. This is not at all ideal, but in the absence of better mounting options, I'm basically just shoving this whole fuselage thing down into the desk, into the bench. And trying to bow it into submission. Okay, so I just got done with the special joy of mating the rear fuselage to the mid fuselage sections. And I, I know I said I would try to be more uh, more positive in working on this kit tonight versus last night. And that started out pretty well. I, I will give kudos to Kitty Hawk. They did a, an absolutely fantastic job with the speed brake housings. These things fit extremely well into the rear fuselage. And, I think it's kind of shitty that you have to put the actuators in there because, I mean, you're just asking to break these off at some point. But, you know, getting them in there afterwards would have been kind of dicey, so I get it. 
then came the fuselage joint itself, and I feel like a uh, like a completely damn broken record when I keep going on about this, but this is exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about Kitty Hawk's sloppy engineering. You have six pieces that make up a fuselage, which first of all is ridiculous. Second of all, if you're going to do that, make some provisions for having them go together in a way that aligns. Don't just have two circles that don't really fit the same shape and just stick them together. That's, come on guys, you know, put some tabs in here, put, you know, put a collar in here that goes between these two that want, you know, glues inside the mid fuselage, then can slot right into the rear fuselage. Everything would be nice and aligned. It would be painless. Instead, it's a butt joint. You know, it, I mean, special hobby, you know, has moved past this years ago. I mean, I, I legitimately do not get it. So maybe I'm not a good enough builder to make it work, but I don't think I should have to be for an $80 kit. You know, this thing is playing with the Hobby Boss SU-27. It's playing with the Tamiya F-14. It's playing with the Kinetic Hornet. You know, all of all kits that go together quite well. You know, the Hornet has a few quibbles here and there, but for the most part, it goes together very nicely. This thing does not, and it's all because of stupid choices they made when engineering this kit. That, I mean, defend it all you want for, oh, I've never had trouble with it, fine. A lot of people are going to. There's a reason that Kitty Hawk has the reputation it has, and it's because of these stupid choices. So, thanks to that, you know, I've got a mostly round fuselage here with, with nice steps in it that if I were building this for real, I would now be swearing at for having to come in here and sand and clean this up, especially with all this fine rivet detail right around the barrel there. That's just going to get blown right away. And for for nothing, for absolutely nothing, for a stupid butt join when fixes aplenty, you know, are readily available. So, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the gear bay, uh, the nose gear bay and the front fuselage. And we'll hope that maybe, maybe, just, just maybe, the front fuselage and the mid fuselage go together better than what we've seen so far with the back. <laughs> 